I was just gonna explain to everyone how easy it is to get rich with gold line resources here, but we'll have to talk to them after. Thanks everyone, and again, great presentation by Ronald. I feel much better about being in the, uh, in the, in the gold space. Um, we're building a, a wonderful portfolio in Fenelscandia. Uh, we're 12 months into our public listing, and I'm here to tell you all about gold line resources. Um, talking about places to do business, talking about great places to, to build gold mines, and ultimately trying to find gold in places where gold exists already. Uh, we're very happy to be working in Sweden and Finland, um, first world countries, great cost, uh, cost base to produce and to discover gold. Uh, we've got six projects across Sweden and Finland. Thank you. Um, uh, we started out with uh, acquiring a significant position on the gold uh, line belt. Gold line resources is called gold line resources because of our uh, strategic positioning of, of our projects in Sweden. And we recently acquired two other projects from Igniko Eagle. Uh, we are the largest mineral rights holder amongst junior companies in Sweden. Um, and most importantly, we uh, acquired a maiden resource through our acquisition of the OERV uh, project in Finland with 250,000 ounces as a starting point. Experience management team uh, led by um, focused geological expertise in Scandinavia. We've got EMX as our partners, and I'll tell you a little bit how we acquired this project and uh, uh, through that partnership. Uh, we've got a prospective po portfolio of six projects. The Swedish properties were uh, first acquired um, in about 2015-16. What happened is the price of gold hit one of its lowest levels in the last decade. A very difficult time for miners, and a lot of these projects uh, lapsed. Uh, payments were not made, exploration uh, was not advanced, and ultimately a lot of the claims along the gold line belt uh, became available. Uh, Eric Jensen, who's on our board, um, and the EMX team ultimately identified these opportunities and basically uh, 12 months after these projects sat in the moratorium, literally 12 months and one minute, uh, they were on the geological website in, um, in Sweden and, and secured very strategic land position. These are historically identified mineralized zones. Uh, technical work in the region um, you know, really did not open up to modern exploration until most uh, about 20, year, 20, 30 years ago. So ultimately this belt became available. We grabbed that belt. Uh, and, and built ourselves a very strategic position on the gold line. Uh, and most recently, we did acquire uh, 250,000 ounces and an entire greenstone belt from Igniko Eagle in a transaction we completed in March this year. Some general corporate information. We have about uh, um, 108 million shares outstanding. We're about 15 cents per share. That puts us at around a $15 million market cap uh, with, with two, potentially three district scale projects in a great place to do business. Um, our stock prices hit a high of 75 cents, a low of 12 to 13 cents. Uh, we recently uh, capitalized the company with a $1.3 million financing at 12 cents a share and are sitting at around 15, 15 and a half cents Canadian. We trade on the US uh, OTC market and on the German market here as well. Strategic investors and partners, EMX is just under 9% ownership in gold line resources at this point. Leadership team, uh, as CEO, I've been through uh, a few cycles. Uh, I've been a gold investor and really got started in the mid-90s when gold really started to move. Um, I joined a really great company and built a company called Caden Resources in, uh, in the late 2000s. We eventually sold that to Igniko Eagle for $210 million uh, after the peak uh, price of gold had hit. Um, our, our team is made up of a Swedish-based exploration team, um, foundation around the EMX team, but ultimately we're building out that team ourselves. We recently added Toby Pierce to our board of directors, uh, and very importantly, Eric Jensen uh, as, as a member of the EMX team, uh, and really is the one who had the vision for how this gold uh, opportunity will develop in Sweden and, uh, and develop the partnership with Igniko to, for us to make that acquisition. As we move along, uh, some wonderful senior advisors, uh, Benny Matheson, um, formerly with Boleden, uh, and Louis Thiel, 30 years of Newmont, uh, head of exploration and really leading our exploration uh, advisory team. Jumping into this, this portfolio in Sweden, again, you see here on the, on the left-hand side is the gold line belt. Uh, past producing mines, currently producing mines, you find gold where other gold exists and, is, and gold is being mined. Um, we've got three projects, Thorjukten, Blarbeliden, and Pawbacken. Today I'll focus a little bit more on Pawbacken because that's where our exploration has, uh, has led to uh, diamond drilling today. 
Uh, we also have the Kankberg project over in the east uh, that we're not really working on. And typically, you know, typical greenstone belt, um, we're talking, you know, historical exploration. These are zones of exploration that were identified in the 70s and 80s by the Geological Survey of Sweden. Um, so we know these things exist. It wasn't until the mid-90s that we actually had uh, capital uh, enter Sweden to, to apply more modern techniques. So you're talking about belts that are significantly underexplored. In Canada, where I'm from, you would find a belt like this would have been explored by 100 different companies over seven or eight different mining cycles. This has only really opened up in the last 10, 15, 20 years. You've only had maybe 15 years of modern exploration on these belts. So very exciting for us to be able to take low cost effective uh, exploration techniques, pair them with what we've known from uh, historical intercepts and success of these, of these zones, strategically acquiring these zones in a, in a very poor market. You would never be able to put a project like this together uh, in today's $1,800, $1,900 gold price. Again, significant works completed over the last two, three years. Most notably, 2021 was a very active year for base of till drilling. We invested a lot of money. There's a, there's a thin veneer uh, um, overburden on this belt, probably 15, 20 meters deep. So what you're typically doing is following stream sediments and, and, uh, and ultimately looking at identifying uh, targets. You're, you're, you're using this base of till drilling where we're, we're, we're protruding the ground and hitting bedrock. And most, you know, we put in, almost 550, 575 base of till holes, 20 meters deep, and ultimately, you know, just slowly identifying where those targets are. We have had intercepts now, and we've intersected mineralization in bedrock. So in our paw back in project, uh, we've ultimately uh, identified targets that are about 15, 20 meters deep. We've hit as high as 3.9 grams per ton over three, three and a half meters. So basically our base of till holes are hitting the bedrock. Uh, they've identified what these targets are and put us into a very strong position to, to advance them further. Um, again, 100% ownerships of all of our projects, uh, large land positions. Um, the Storzhukten project in general, three main targets, uh, Storzhenhaben, uh, Harzbund, and Aida targets. This is in the south of the Gold Line Belt. This is uh, contiguous to Barshley, uh, Barshley's discovery and their partnership with Igniko Eagle. And this is precisely where we're drilling today. Uh, we're about three, uh, three holes deep into our uh, first diamond drill program. So after spending time and money on, uh, on extending our exploration through base of till drilling, we're now in a position to be drilling these targets. Um, and again, we're, we're situated immediately south of Barshley's deposit. We're 300, I don't know, yeah, four, 600 meters from the Svartalidin pr uh, production mine. And again, we've got established highways, we've got low cost power, anything that we define as a mineral resource, any discoveries we make, very easy to put that into production with the various operations in, on the belt. Um, and again, you're seeing uh, um, belts like these and opportunities like these are very difficult to, to put together quickly. This idea was synthesized in 2015, 16, after EMX was already in Sweden and in Europe for many, many years, identifying that as an opportunity. So today, especially after Ronald's presentation, I'm feeling much better about being in the gold space and about having these land packages. So we're in, we're in good times. I was in the gold space in 2007, 8, 9, 10. Uh, those were excellent and interesting times as well. But uh, as everyone knows, the last decade has been a little bit difficult. Um, I think we're returning to those exciting times again. Um, our targets have been developed and extended over the last two years. Um, a lot of work has been done, and as you can see here in the south, uh, those red dots represent where we've hit base of till holes into the bedrock, where we've seen significant mineralization, and we're essentially doing diamond drilling across those targets at the Aida target, and we'll be moving to the Hartspun target as well. That started out as a, I think, a 400 meter anomaly. That's now a two kilometer anomaly uh, uh, trending northwest. Uh, towards the Barshley deposit and on trend, and, and we will be putting two significant diamond holes uh, into that target uh, later this year. Moving over quickly as I'm running out of time, uh, the OERV project uh, acquired from Igniko Eagle. Um, where, you know, in North America, specifically in Ontario, you would never be able to take an entire greenstone belt, have it consolidated to be owned by one company, and have the known discovery on that deposit already. We've got a quarter million ounce discovery in a historical resource on a greenstone belt that we control 100%. Uh, and ultimately, we know this, you know, we've got a two kilometer strike length for that resource. We've, we've got uh, drill holes that confirm that target extends another two kilometers to the southwest, completely untested to the northeast. Um, 
The last drill holes on this property were about nine, ten years ago with Igneco. Igneco purchased this property in the late 2000s uh, in a combination with some of the other assets they acquired in the area. Um, this is the least studied greenstone belt in Finland. Uh, we know one of the, you know, we talked about discoveries. Rupert Resources, probably the most significant discovery in the last few years, is now a billion dollar company. They've defined a 3.5 million ounce resource. Uh, and most recently, we've had Orion Resources to the north uh, hit about 50 meters of two gram material and, and close out a $13 million financing. So the region, Finland, is obviously picking up momentum. Uh, Newfoundland has been the story in the last 12 months with some of the exciting uh, discoveries there. I really feel Sweden and Finland present an excellent opportunity and we're starting to see interest at the banking level um, for projects of scale and for projects that are a little bit more advanced. Uh, Oyarvi has over 50,000 meters of drilling on it to date, uh, 290 drill holes. 230 of those holes are greater than two grams per ton. So this is a high grade opportunity, 4.1 average grade uh, gold. Um, and again, you could see here a little bit, yeah, you can see the yellow star, uh, Kilimakangas, is the 250,000 ounce resource. That is a two kilometer uh, um, uh, trend that uh, has not been tested at depth. That 250,000 ounces is within 100 to 150 meters. Um, uh, of known mineralization. It's a two kilometer strike length uh, opportunity, so we still have probably a, you know, 800 to 1,000 meters of, of drilling opportunity beneath that. Uh, our team, our technical team, feels this is an easy million ounce deposit without easy, even testing it to the southwest or, or some of the other parallel zones. And this is a complete turnkey operation. Igneco spent nine years working the property, never had the budget to fully drill this off. So we've taken Igneco's exact exploration plan all we have to do is simply finalize our permitting, go in and drill exactly where they would have drilled these targets um, and expand that resource. So this is our immediate opportunity for adding value. And as a $15 million company, here we are positioned with two significant land packages, two exploration programs for multiple uh, million ounce, dis multi-million ounce discovery across both of those belts. So you have the potential, I think, as a $15 million company, pretty conservatively to double triple the stock from here just based on some of the near-term drilling and with a little bit of success you have obviously multi-million ounce potential across both of these large belts. And again this is the greenstone belt as defined in the area. Agnico, uh, Agnico as, uh, as time went on consolidated the area, ensured they had the land package. EMX uh, partnered with them to ensure that that was a controlled situation and when we acquired the 250,000 ounces we've acquired uh, an entire greenstone belt with 35 kilometers of strike length uh, opportunity. So this is really an explore, uh, explorer's dream to have an entire belt. You would never find this opportunity in Ontario. This greenstone belt would have been drilled out, as, as I said, over the last three or four mining cycles and probably had about 100 different companies staking different parts of this land to build companies off of. So we have a very unique, a very uh, distinct portfolio that's been put together uh, you know, through, through years of work. Um, and again, 1.8 million tons, 4.11 gram average grade, and we are quite confident we're going to be able to triple that, maybe quadruple that in the next 12 months and build out our first maiden resource. Yeah. Time for two questions? Sure, I yeah, will just so go to finalization. Okay. Um, maybe I start with the questions. Um, I have two. First is how is the lab situation in, in, in Sweden and Finland? How's the what? The, the situation in the labs. Do you have to wait a lot for, for the results? Uh, we've got a pretty good relationship with the uh, lab company. Through our partnership with EMX, we expect four to six week turnaround on drill holes. So we've got our first three holes going into the lab now. Expect results probably mid-December. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And second question, um, how big is your budget for exploration in the next 12 months? Uh, our next three months are about a 2,000 meter program. We have warrants that we can bring in another eight to $10 million and expect okay. to have uh, I would hope, you know, 10,000 meter drill program by the end of 2022. Okay, Adam will be here the whole day, I think. Um, so if you have questions, more questions, or like to have a one-to-one. -one, Thanks, Derek. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. Thank you.